Welcome back, my friends, to another rousing rendition. Choir Boys Cutlery Outdoors, Steel Forge and Fire, Sword and Knife, Skipper's Barbecue. I got Jimbo and Joe's with me. Listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to just have a roundtable discussion on some knives. We're going to talk about Eagle's Tears from three weeks ago and just have a good time. Now, no demonstrations in this other than just kind of maybe showing you the knives. Joe's taking some pictures. We're going to do some B-roll. Check these out on Instagram as well. Before we get into any knives, 22 veterans a day in this country take their own lives. Bets, love you. You have a place here. We back to blue over here. We support Leo. How do we do that, Joe? Don't break the damn law. Break the damn law. <laughs> and finally, if you are an addict, never quit quitting. So, first things first. Eagle's Tears. Jimbo? Let everybody know what you did. Now, this is this is one of the knives that we coated a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it's a carbon steel knife, and three weeks ago, I rubbed it down the blade and the handle itself with Eagle Tears and left it sitting out on over here on my smoker uh, just to see what it would do. Um, we've had about four days... In this three weeks, we've had four days of rain. We've had temperatures in the mid-20s and up to about 80 degrees. And I didn't touch this knife until Joe and Scab came over here a few minutes ago and showed it to them. Not the first bit of rust on it. Um, this is Scab's knife, uh, the Ontario Old Hickory. The same, same night we rubbed it down, and I believe, Scab, you left this on your porch. Back porch. For three weeks, he's left it on his back porch. Not the first not the first sign of rust on it. Um, if y'all remember on the video that night, I also rubbed down my cutting board. I wanted to try one of my cutting boards out on it. And over the last three weeks, I've probably used this one particular cutting board probably roughly four or five times. Done nothing but cut on it, washed it, dried it, and I won't do it now. We've got all these knives on here, but when Joe and Scab got here, I got a cup of water and poured on it, and the water just beads up on it. Nothing's going down into the, the wood grain itself. So I'm definitely sold on not only it protecting knives, it's protecting that wood also. All right, so I'll be a witness here. I'm here to actually witness. So, uh, But I, I can tell you there's absolutely no rust on these blades, and I mean, from what they tell me, as far as I'm keeping it out in the elements like this, and to have that coating really protect these knives, I mean, it's pretty amazing. And yes, he actually poured water all over the board, and the water kind of beat it up. It almost made the, the board absolutely waterproof. Yeah. You know, it's, it's pretty And amazing. I can tell so you I that, can, I that I do that. use, prior to using this, I do have a oil and a cream that's made for cutting boards, and... It wouldn't have lasted four or five times me using this. I would have had to recoat it, let it sit overnight, and then wipe the wax off from it. Um, it's a good product, but I can tell you right now that the Eagle Tears are superior to what I've been using on these That's cutting great. boards. That's great. All right, so here's the deal, guys. I've said this a million times. A million times I'll say it a million more. This ain't the QVC channel. Not trying to say you on a thing. We do support Eagle Tears for the simple fact Mr. George is a veteran. He's a good man. He's been fair to me. Try him out. But again, not trying to say you shit. Buy it or don't. But I can tell you right now, Jimbo's left that knife outside, not on the porch, outside on that grill. He coated the handle, did the whole, and I did too, because they're both, both, uh, well, that one's completely covered, right? Probably a stick tang. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, it's a full tang. It's in the back. It's in the back. Yeah. yeah, I see it. That's a full tang. So we coated the handle, and it held up. Now, here's what I want to do. We sent, Jimbo and I sent a box of knives to DJ Horn. Thank you, DJ. Thank you, DJ. There's no, When I tell y'all DJ's a professional, and again, Joe's here to verify. I'm impressed. I'm it's, impressed. Yeah. It's Real quick, and we just want to do a quick round table. And we brought, now this is one of the, the knives that Gene and Kayla Johnson sent to Joe to review the Joker. Beautiful knife. Beautiful knife. What we want to do now is just a quick five, six, seven minute round table because I want Joe to talk about his favorite knife on this table. I'm going to show you some of the stuff DJ did. 
But check out Instagram. Check out Joe's Instagram. Check out my Instagram. Check out Jimbo's Instagram. Ours is the Salty Skipper Barbecue. Salty Skipper Barbecue. And we'll have we'll have pictures, better pictures, um, and all that. But I can tell you this: as far as a knife, a Spanish, I mean, I love Spanish made knives. This Joker, I messed around with it yesterday. It's fantastic. It's got the bowler, what is that, N six ninety five steel? Six ninety five. Six ninety five. Yep. Is that G ten or is that? That is uh that's Micarta. My card and it's got the red liners. Yeah, my yeah. card with the red liners. Yep. I'm impressed with this knife. And I love a le- the, the thing about the European knives, a lot of them, is they do these leather sheaths. They'll put it like dangler style where it sits deep. Yeah. But the quality of leather, dude, it's insane. Now, real quick, I'm going to let... Skip, I want you to explain what he did to this edge. I'm going to show this one. Guys, real quick, right here. This is this is a Kershaw Emerson design. Um, I'm not sure. Is it CQC what? It's the uh, 8. This is a CQC 8, but this is by Kershaw. Now, it had the chisel grind on it. Everybody knows that about Emerson. Jimbo hates the chisel grind. He sent it to DJ. This is what DJ did. Amazing. Now, guys, listen to me. You would never know he did anything to it. No. That, that's <laughs> phenomenal. There's no, you're not going to find a blemish. And again, Joe, let's try to get, we'll get a good picture of this with Joe's stuff and get it out because this is insane. Now, Joe, do me a favor. I want, I'm going to ask Joe to show his favorite knife on this table um, and talk about it for a minute. I have to say, there's a lot of beautiful knives on this table, but I have to basically go with the Jed Hornby, only because I've been wanting to hold one in my hand for a while, and just his work, as far as what he does to it, is, I mean, just you can see that it says Jed Hornby on there. Look at that spine. Look at the thickness of the tang. I mean... This is a solid, amazing, amazingly made knife. I really, really like this. Um, what was it? The Hinderer you showed me? Yeah, that's the Emmet. Oh, this is the Emmet. It's the Hinderer Emmet. Look at this. Look at this leather sheet. I mean, I actually admired this sheet before I took out the knife for about a couple of minutes. I mean, I didn't even want to take the knife out. I mean, I don't know if you can see a good angle over here. It should be good. But this is absolutely stunning. And then when you see the knife, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, we brought that one back. I'll probably do a quick review on that sometime this week. And these are my get, two favorites. Get these back to uh, JR. Jimbo. Now, real quick, guys, I'm going to get Jimbo because we don't want this to go. One, I want to show you all this. This is an original, and I if I tried to tell you who made it, I'd be lying to you. My guy, Kirk, sent it to me, asked if I could sharpen it up. It went immediately to DJ. Look at that. I mean, this thing will cut you in twain. I'll try to get as many reviews on this stuff as I can, but but again, DJ Horn is a professional and an awesome, awesome guy, awesome brother in the blade. Here's a quick look. There's one of the hinders. I think it's the XM-18, but this is the full that he redid the uh, edge, new profile, and this is one of my favorite knives of all times, the Spartan Harzy folder. I mean, it's, it's just... And again, DJ did it. Uh, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask uh, Jimbo to show us some of these cleavers and walk us through and wrap us up. All right. Uh, I know in the last video, me and, or a couple weeks ago, that we had mentioned that we were going to show some of the, my vintage cleavers. It's just a little hobby I have. That I collect them. And I figured I'd just bring a handful of them out here and show because I know some people said they were interested. The three sitting on the cutting board are all F. Dicks, which are, they're made in Germany. And not the new F. Dicks, but their vintage cleavers are stamped with a number. And they'll have a number with an X. It'll have a number with an X and then another number. The first number is the month it was made. The second number will be the year. So this one would have been made in January of 1954. This one here. That one's my favorite. The big one. February 1923. Beautiful. That's just a beautiful blade, man. Just to see. And this one here is Mark. I'm sorry. September of 1933. 
still has the original scales on all of them. And this one here is a WM Median Sun. I originally thought it was made in the early 1930 or 1930 to 1950 but after doing some research i've actually found out it was in the early 1800s they made this style between 18 i think it, i read it was 1820 and 1834 still has the original handle and all that on it um they don't get used a whole lot i just kind of collect them and little hobby i've got and i know some people were interested in seeing them so i figured i'd get some a handful of them out and show them off show it right here by your waist that thing but this here is nine awesome. inches well, i'll, I'll kind of put my hand and i've got a pretty big hand put my hand and it don't cover the that's that's a serious piece of steel there. yeah <laughs> serious. you can that's see the thickness of it that is serious <laughs> damn so, Guys, listen, we're going to wrap this thing up, but I want it with us three standing here. This is the Power Hammer buoy from KHHI Nepal. Now, this is the extra large, right? This is the extra large, yeah. This and is custom, custom extra large. Now, I think Grugs from Legion Tactical, well, I know Grugs sent this, and Grugs, man, thank you so, so much. Um, where I am going to do a review on both of this one and the other one, which is behind me. Um, I think Pistol Pete, uh, has one of these too, doesn't he? He, I believe he does. I Actually, think he Pistol does Pete have an has extended one, one too. Yes, either, yeah. and I know he's got an extended preacher. But yeah. Rug sent this one, and I want y'all just to look. This is the three of us standing here, and it's look massive. at this. It is huge. I mean, it's it's it's. I'll I'll show you something. Here's everybody typically has. This is just an old hickory butcher knife from uh, Ontario. Yeah, it takes. It's ridiculous. Now, here's the deal, guys. We got we got several things. We got Blade Talk with Scab and Joe. We're doing a live in, in a few hours. Yep. Well, we're doing a live at Sunday. What's the date? The 30th? 31st? 30th. 30th. Uh, sometime this afternoon, we got Blade Talk with Scab and Joe. Go subscribe. We got Steel Forge and Fire Sword and Knife Enthusiasts. Choir Boys Cutlery Outdoors. Salty Skipper Barbecue. Follow Jimbo on Instagram. I'm going to put some pictures up and tag him in it. Follow him on Instagram. We got a lot of things coming. Listen, I love y'all. God knows I do. God bless y'all. I hope he does. I'm Scab. I'm Joe. I'm Jimbo. You're not. You're not. And we're gone, son. <laughs> Have a good one, guys. Later, guys. Later.